Hi there and welcome back to RC Model Review. Some real basic stuff today, super, super basic because I'm going to get a bit more involved in the whole electric power thing, bring some more theory to you, try and help you do things like decide what motor, what propeller, what speed controller, what battery to use for a specific model when you're looking at electrically powering it. Now, for most of us it's not a problem. We buy an ARF or a, a plug and fly model off the shelf and it comes with a motor, it comes with a propeller, it comes with a speed controller, you just throw a battery in it and you fly. But sometimes you, you want to know what's going on behind the scenes and if you have a better understanding of all the factors that go into producing the, the complete electric power system, then you can get more out of it and you can make changes, safe changes, because sometimes you know you see people say, oh I've just changed from a three cell to a four cell and boy does my plane fly a lot better now. But Hey, you may be overstressing your speed controller. It could end up turning into a, you know, a ball of flame in midair. Honestly, the, you know, the magic smoke comes out and things fall from the sky. Speed controllers catch on fire. They actually burn really well. So you need to know what you're doing. And so I'm going to start right from the very basics and talk about electricity. Electrical power. Now, there are several things you need to know about electricity. One of them is volts. That's a measure of the voltage, obviously. Yes. And we have current. Ooh, I'll put amps. Amps, because that's a measure of, this is voltage, obviously. And this is current. Make that clear, I hope. Um, and also you have power, which is watts. Watts is power. And ohms is resistance. Okay, those are four quantities or four things you need to know about when you're dealing with electrical systems. Now, let's have a look. And this gets a bit, if you haven't done science at school, you're a bit rusty on the basics of, of physics and science and electrical theory, I'm gonna do some analogies here. Now, they're not perfect anal analogies, but they will help you understand what's going on. If we think of voltage as pressure, just like if you have water system or a, a compressed air system, the more pressure you've got, the more um, force there is trying to drive the water through the pipes or the air through the pipes. And amps, current, that is the same as flow. So there we go, we've got pressure and flow. So obviously if you have a, a hose and you have a certain amount of pressure behind it, then the water will squirt out, excuse the noise, we've got planes flying over. The pressure will squirt out through the hose, you get more flow. The more pressure, the more flow. If the if the hose is the same diameter. And speaking of diameters, let's look at resistance. Ohms, that is the, actually it's just resistance. Now if you're thinking in terms of water, the smaller the pipe, the more resistance there is to, flow of, to the flow of water through it. So a big pipe, less resistance, so more water can flow. So these three factors here are intricately linked. The more pressure, the more flow. The, the more resistance, the less flow. And it's simple. Those are the three factors that will show you some simple formulas and you can see how they work. But there's another one here, watts. Watts is power. And power is a combination. Think of power as, well, I don't know, the amount of work that can be done. Power is a combination of the voltage and the current. And to get power, there's a formula here we can use. If we use power as W for watts equals volts times amps. There you go. So watts equals volts times amps. And since it's watts that really determine how much, or we measure the power going into our models in watts. You know, a small model might have just 30, 40, 50 watts. A big model, like a big, let's say a hotline, a really powerful model, or a big EDF, can have kilowatts, thousands of watts. But no matter how much power, it's a function of the voltage times the current. And those are the basics. So if we want to draw the analogy, voltage is measure, volts measures voltage, and it's a measure of electrical pressure. Amps measures current, and it's a measure of the flow of electricity. Watts measures power, and it is the amount of work that is done. And ohms is the resistance to flow. And it's measured, oh sorry, that, yeah, ohms is the resistance, and it's actually it's a resistance to flow. So let's draw some simple circuits and see what we can work out from this. This is really, this is electricity 101, but it's important if you want to learn how to Work your models out. Let's say we've got a battery here and it goes through a resistor and here's a current meter like so. Plus volts minus 
let's say we have 10 volts. There we go. So V equals 10. 10 volts. And this is a this is circuit design for a resistor. But that could be a motor, it could be a light, it could be anything. Um, 10 volts. Let's say this has a resistance of 5 ohms. Remember we're talking about ohms as a measure of the resistance. The, the way it tries to impede the flow of electricity. So 5 ohms will try and reduce the amount of electricity flowing. We can work out how much current we've got. We've got the R equals 5 ohms. Now we can work out the current, which is going to be measured by this amp meter here, because all these things are linked together. We use the triangle here. This is the easy way. If you're not into algebra, then you'll find this to be a very, very simple way of getting one when you know the other. Okay? Voltage, and I is normally used for current. Which, you know, that's the symbol for current. A is the measure of current. Amps is a measure, but I is the symbol of current. Don't ask me why they say I. Why don't they say C? Well, they don't. C is for capacitance. V, I, and R. This is the Ohm's law triangle. So we know V is 10. So let's put 10 up here. We know R is 5. So let's put 5 down here and we draw that line. So the, the missing quantity, the one here, this question mark, to get that you divide 10 by 5. So we'll have 2 amps. In this circuit, 2 amps will flow. We've done the math, we've worked it out. 2 amps. So with a pressure of 10 volts, and a resistance to flow of 5 ohms, then the actual flow will be 2 amps. Simple. It's basic kids, you know, it's just simple division, multiplication, whatever. There you go. Now, you might say, well, okay, how much power's in this circuit? Well, you need a new formula for that, because power, I'll do it down here, let's say watts equals the current times the voltage. Okay? We know I and we know R, because we've filled this in down here. Let's just put that figure in our little triangle that we had. There we go. So we know we've got R is 5, V is 10. We need to know um, what we've got I. We worked out I is 2. So there's a triangle. So to work out the watts, we can replace these. We can say I is 2 times, uh, what have we got? V up here is 10. So we have 20 watts. So this resistor here, because that's where all the energy will be going, will be absorbing or producing or releasing 20 watts of energy. The battery will be delivering 20 watts into that little circuit. It's pretty simple stuff. You probably, I probably lost half of you already anyway, but that's the basics. Now, to look at how things, if this was our electrical system on our plane, our model plane, here's a battery, here's our motor. Um, how can we work out this motor would be doing, so let's just say this is a motor. And this isn't strictly true because there's other factors, but let's just pretend, pretend for a moment that this is a motor with a propeller on it. There we go. Um, and it has an effective resistance of 5 ohms. We've got 2 amps flowing through. It's doing 20 watts. 20 watts of power. Now what happens if we increase our battery voltage to 15 volts? Let's increase our battery voltage. What's going to happen in this circuit? Well, remember this is the pressure. The voltage is the pressure. So the pressure trying to push the electricity through this circuit is going up. And if the pressure goes up, the flow will increase, assuming that the resistance hasn't changed. Of course, the resistance here isn't changing, so the flow will go up. So now we can redo our sums, because we've got V equals 15, R still equals 5. And so we change the figures over here. We can go over, and I'll just do another little triangle. Am I running out of room on here? No, I've got enough room. Let's do another triangle. And what do we know? We know that V is 15. We know that that's still 5. So now, if we do the sums, 15 divided by 5, suddenly we've got 3 amps flowing through our circuit. The amount of current, the flow has increased, because as I said, you increase the pressure. If all else is the same, the flow will increase. Increase the voltage. If all else is the same, the current will increase. And we've increased from 2 amps to 3 amps. So how much power are we doing now? Before, we were doing 20 watts. Let's do this sum here again. We know that I is 3 amps. We know that V is 15 volts. Multiply those together. Suddenly, we now have 45 watts. That's quite a bit more than 20 watts. We've gone up to 45 watts. Even though we only increased our voltage by 50%, we've increased the power by more than double. 
See that? And so when you look at this, it's very easy to see that, wow, sometimes a little change can have a big effect. We raise the voltage a little bit, suddenly our motor is producing a lot more power. So if our motor isn't big enough, the smoke comes out of it. When we raise the voltage, the, the current goes up. So if the ESC isn't big enough, the smoke comes out. Those are basic, simple functions, simple formulas for dealing with the basics of electrical flow. Now, as I said, there's some, I've taken a few liberties because motors aren't purely a resistor. And you've got an ESC in here as well, which has an effect on how the current flows. But this is pretty sound, pretty solid. You can rely on these figures to be pretty accurate. So let's have a look in the next video. Real world, let's look at a real battery, a real motor, and see what happens when we increase the voltage and also when we reduce the resistance. And how do we reduce the resistance? Well, electric motors are funny things. If you put an electric motor on a battery, it'll draw a certain amount of current. If you raise the voltage, the current will go up. But there's another way to make the current go up, and it's to put a load on the motor. When you put a load on an electric motor, effectively, its resistance drops. So it might go from five ohms to three ohms. And if that happens, can you guess what will happen to the current? Of course, the current will go up. In fact, let's do a little sum now. Let's um, clear out some of this stuff here. And let's change our formulas. Let's assume we have 10 volts. We'll go back to 10 volts. Put the 10 volts back in there, but we'll do it with a low of 10 volts. So we've got, here's our triangle. Let's fill these in. Volts are 10. We've got three ohms now. So we go down here and we put 10 and we've got three over here. So what does that give us for current? Well, we're dividing 10 by three, which is three point, well, it's a th but, uh, 10 divided by three is nine, so I've got a calculator, because I'm old and my brain doesn't work at this hour of the day. So I've got 10 divided by three equals, it's 3.33 recurring, so it's 3.3, let's say 3.3 amps. So now our current has gone up to 3.3 amps. Even though we're still using 10 volts, now if we fill in these figures over here, we've got, um, we do our, our power calculation, which is V times I, or I times V, it doesn't matter. We can say the voltage is still 10, but the current is 3, which means we're now doing 30 watts. 30 watts of power now. We haven't changed the voltage, but we did change the resistance of the motor. That can be done by putting a bigger prop on it. As you put bigger props on your motors, they draw more current. Their resistance gets lower, so they draw more current. So simply going an extra inch in prop size might turn your motor. Let's put our thing over here. We've got 30 watts now for this one. Using the same size battery and just putting an extra prop, extra inch of prop on there, reduce the resistance of the motor. So now it will draw 30 watts from the same battery. Now, if your speed controller was only a 20 amp speed controller, which was okay for here, you might blow it up. So that's what happens. These three factors, the voltage, the resistance, and the current are all intimately linked. And we need to, when you change one, it will affect the others. And you've got to know how they affect each other. That's why this little triangle here is so useful because it relates the voltage to the current to the resistance. And that enables you to work out one from the other. And then the other formula over here, voltage times current equals power. Remember those simple formulas, they're really straightforward. It's not complex algebra, it's not calculus. It's really elementary stuff. We'll use those in some practical experience, experiments in coming videos and I will show you how to use these formulas to work out what will happen when you put a bigger battery in or a smaller battery or a bigger prop or a smaller prop or whatever. So I hope this is some basics for you. I hope I haven't confused the snot out of people. I've tried to keep it short and I don't know if you want me to continue in this direction with this really basic elementary stuff. Let me know and I'll do my best to create those videos for you. In the meantime, comments, questions, critiques, on the bottom of the video in the, in the comments area. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up so that others can find it. Thanks for watching. Bye from RC Model Reviews.